you you've said it twice now that yeah. um humans look as at animals as lesser than yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Like yo, when I see a squirrel outside, I'm sorry, I am superior to that squirrel. In what way? Do you believe that or no? Well, in what way? Are you My life is more valuable than the squirrel's life. Do you believe that? I believe to you it is. I believe to the squirrel, the squirrel's life is more valuable. True. The squirrel yeah. though did not found a civilization. Neither that did is, you. I'm a human. Human. You didn't do that shit though. You, I did not do my okay, my me, ancestors did. And yeah, their yeah, yeah. Did. Okay. Yeah. What was that? Did you just bark? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was that? We I do want to. It sounded it's like a, pearl. The word is this, and we don't use this word much in society anymore. But it's a called a belch. It's a burp <laughs> that has very long reach. That's incredible. Yeah. Welcome back to Impulsive, by the way. Oh, shit. The number one wow. podcast. <laughs> We're in, doing in this. the world. Oh, yo, I came up with this thing. What do you got? Um, I think I should say that cooler from now on. <clears throat> Welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the yeah. world. Thank you guys for listening, watching, subscribing. Incredible. Uh, wherever you do so, YouTube, iTunes, Spotify. I don't really give a fuck. As long button. as you're watching, hit that button. Button. That subscribe button. <laughs> um, leave your f- feedback. We love hearing it. We do an audio only Q&A with the guest after the show is over. I feel like a broken record saying this every time. It's the second podcast of the day. We did extreme goat yoga this morning and I sat in an oxygen chamber so I could fix my brain, my brain, my prefrontal cortex so I could feel empathy. I thought you were supposed to sleep in it. You're just like doing sessions in it? Yeah, 80 hours. I go, I go one hour What's it every morning. Like? Do you find it and, so, and so also, like, I, I just addressed this on Twitter. You were in the video. Um, dude, some people are saying the brain scan is fake. And they're like comparing it next to an image that's like very clearly different. But also it's a brain scan. So it's like brains look similar. Uh, right. Anyways, I just addressed it. I didn't want to address it. But to, uh, to everyone doubting the scan. Who are the suck, some people? Suck a cock. Yeah, who suck a are cock, these people? I, and cock. I asked him. I said, why do you even fucking respond? Like the thing about me is like. You saw these people reach out to me on Twitter sometimes and they say, Mike, when are you going to start listening to the feedback from from us on the the YouTube videos? And when you do this on the podcast, I say, quite literally, don't give a fuck. So I'm not going to ever listen to it. Uh, Just because, just because, bro, like, look, I don't give a shit, bro. Being a Twitter headline is dope, but I'm kind of over it for, for, uh, scandals and controversies. I don't want to do it anymore. So it made so, it up to a headline? No, already? no. Or it was on the Yo, way. Yo, if it made you it up to a headline, it, it. I would fucking flip. No. I'd lose my shit. Mm. Fake a brain scan? Yo, the dude who did my brain scan is a legitimate doctor who will lose his job if he fakes a brain scan for some fucking YouTuber. Suck a cock. I need my charger, bro. My phone, my Why laptop's about to die. The fucking morons, dude. I swear to God. No, no, something- listen, listen, listen. It's all fun. It's all it's all Con, good, good energy. You got it, bro. And also, like, I feel ba- I feel bad coming in here so uh, Hot. negatively charged because yeah. we got a, we got a great guest today. It's I'm true. on his, I'm on his website right now. It says, "Be kind whenever possible," and it's always possible. Ooh. It's a quote from the Dalai Lama, but still, bro, he embodies kindness. It's the guy, bro. He's so dope. He's super dope. Um, I want to introduce some guys. He is an animal rights activist. He's a plant-based Australian super vegan. <laughs> is that a thing? And uh, yeah, he took a vow of silence for one year. Actually, and then started professionally yodeling after, which was an interesting choice. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, a swerve. it's James Aspie. Hey, can you roll those sound effects of the audience clapping that we never fucking got? Thanks, bro. Appreciate and it. And the yodeling. And the yodeling. Yeah. You, you didn't yodel. I just, I you don't know that. No, I don't. Oh, yeah. I, can you imagine you go from not talking for an entire year to yodeling? I, First things first, man. Let's yodel. Have you ever yodeled? I don't think I have. <laughs> I, I think I have a couple. <laughs> yodle, yodle, yodle. That was pretty good. Yeah, like you that was before, good. Man. Yeah, I think you could do it. Thanks, nice Ramsey over here. Hey, how you doing, bro? Here, you got an accent. You're not from around here. Yeah, man. I'm from Australia. And I appreciate having me on. Thanks, brother. Of course, dude. Of course. Um, yeah, thank you for coming on. So I, I Googled your name. Um... What's this I see about the uh, vegan activist James Aspie running for parliament? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Animal rights activist James Aspie <laughs> plans to win Australian election. Are That's you, some new shit. What? <laughs> are you, yeah, are, yeah, are, you a, are you a politician guy? I look, man. They the Animal Justice Party in Australia reached out to me and they said I might be able to help them out if I be a candidate and get you know if I get elected in my electorate, then the people who are really going to get in there and make some changes can do that. So I'm just helping them out. Are you doing it? I'm doing that part of it. You're going for it. I'll do whatever I can, man. That's one small thing I can do. So let's go. 
I see you. I see you were uh, brought up in plant based news. That's a uh, interesting <clears throat> plant based news. It's an interesting publication. That's is- a good one, man. They do a thing every year: <clears throat> vegan 2018, vegan 2017. All the big highlights of the year. What's going on in the plant based vegan animal rights world? And it's always interesting, man. Big stuff happens. So, yo, there's a lot of talk about to talk about with you. You've done a lot of you've done a lot of stuff, even like on your website here, for example. Like, uh, I took a 365 day vow of silence to raise awareness and for animals and promote peace over violence. I want to talk about that. Uh, it says here you cycled 5,000 kilometers, got tattooed for 25 hours. You've given over 150 species. You do you do a lot of shit. I'm getting busy, man. Yeah. But this vow of silence. Mm. How can you make 150 speeches while you're silent? <laughs> yeah. I'm really good at body language. <laughs> You're lying, bro. <laughs> I, I bet by now you are, yeah? Yeah, I got real good, man. I'm the charades expert around here. You didn't speak for an entire year? I'll be honest with you. Yes. <laughs> I did not, man. But a few words slipped out about five times really? just by accident. But what the, were the words? Uh, well, oh, I was, I was listening. fuck. <laughs> shit. Bitch. <laughs> Yo, some shit like that. Some shit like that. I don't even remember, man. They were just random words that you know, they just went out before I could catch them. But yeah, man, I did a whole year deliberately not speaking and nothing deliberate came out. So I want to, I want to test accidents. I want to click quickly test your, uh, your, your, your language. You say you're really good with body language. Um, <laughs> tell me you, you want me to turn the lights off. That's pretty good. Something that's like pretty that, good. That is great. That's Wait, this is a fun game. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah. How do you ask a girl if she's down to smash? Wait, that looked you like you were trying shit. to have sex with a, with a baby, to be quite honest with you. It's not a perfect science, man. Okay. okay. <laughs> I see, no, it's, see what's it's going not, on there. It's really not a perfect science, He didn't, he didn't label the uh, 200 arrests that took place. <laughs> 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 no, but that's, I mean, you can't fuck. put it all on the side, man. <laughs> whenever my voice, whenever I'm sick and I can't speak and my, my voice is uh, not up to par, I, I'm not going to lie, dude, I feel powerless. I feel like yeah, I can't yeah. do anything. Well, that was the point, man, because the animals who I was doing a vow of silence for, they're basically voiceless as well. I mean, actually, not so much because they have a voice, they're speaking in their own languages. A pig, for example, as you guys probably know, you hear all them grunts, with their body language included and the sounds they make, they saying 80 different things that we're aware of. So they're speaking, but the problem is it's falling on deaf ears, their screams, their cries. We don't actually hear it. We don't pay attention to it because we view them as so much less than us that it just doesn't really register that it's something we should actually care about. And that's due to a lot of conditioning and brainwashing for us to believe in this in this form of discrimination that some lives matter more than others. So not not to not to uh, disagree with you, and I, and I don't want this to be taken out of context or the wrong way. But there's a lot of people, um, especially I know where I came from, the flyover states, Middle mm-hmm. America, who would argue that pigs are indeed less than us. You would uh, testify otherwise. Oh, well, I mean, in many ways, you know, look at what we've done, man. We're very sophisticated. And we're, we're incredible, an incredible species, one of millions though. And what we have in common is what I'm talking about. We all have a heart. We all have a brain. We all feel pain, suffer, want to live, don't want to die. If I stab you in the throat, it feels the same as if I stab a dog or a <coughs> dolphin or a whale or a pig in the throat. So yeah, in some ways, of course, we're superior. And in some ways, different animals are superior when it comes to you know, different things in the, in the way how they can communicate over miles or they, they um, you know, the way that they can find a position in the world that they return to after years of not being there in just different ways. So, but obviously, yeah, what we do is incredible, but it doesn't justify us enslaving them, breeding them into existence for the sole purpose of killing them so we can harvest the meat from their bodies or their eggs or their, um, or their milk. Is there any, is there any world that you see that as being an okay thing to do? In a world where it's necessary. And I wouldn't say that it's okay. I would say a necessary evil, you know, it ain't good, but it's necessary. But we're not cavemen anymore. We've evolved to a point where we no longer need to kill and eat other beings to survive and thrive. We've got the science behind us. We've got the technology behind us. We've got the access to these delicious plant-based foods 
right here. So, and it, it goes further than that. Now we can get meat that is made from plants that tastes the same, that's healthier, better for the planet. No one needed to get their throat slit for that. You had the, the uh, those Impossible Burgers. Yeah, the impossible I love burgers. the burgers, man. And they got Impossible 2.0 now, which is Jesus. supposed to be even better. Motherfucker. We, we actually had them. Updated. It's Impossible. We, that that already? Already? we all had them here. That yeah, brand, yeah. That What'd you think is, of that? They're great. They're, they're, they're great. Good, they're Evan, Evan here, who hates alternative burgers. When he bit it, he, he, he had no idea. Mm. I was, eating, even know the I was eating them left and right. Yeah, I, yeah, they're good, man. I, I have a question for you. I, so I, I think a lot of times we <clears throat> bring guests on the show that are radically right or left mm. or radically vegan or not vegan. And, yeah. and I I try to remain somewhat in the middle. And so my question, I guess one of my questions to you is, is there a step we can take as a society before we try to take this large leap of, uh, turning people vegan or getting people to live this plant-based diet. I, for one, believe there's large steps we can take in the humane mm-hmm. uh, slaughter practice. Okay. And I think we're, we're, we're not doing enough. And I, and I, you know, I, I hope it gets better, but I've mm. seen some horror stories coming out of slaughterhouses in oh, America, yeah. just absolutely terrible. And um, do you think that there's more, like there's more credibility or warrant in a movement to kind of change that than to get people to start eating plants only because it's such a leap. It seems like such a leap. And I totally understand that because for 26 years of my life, I was eating just as much meat as anybody. You I, sick fuck. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fucking monster, man. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that what you're asking for is something that can't exist. A humane way to enslave, a humane Holocaust, a humane murder. I don't think those things exist. So I don't think you can use the word humane, which means to show compassion when we're talking about taking the lives of sentient beings who do not want to die. So I don't think that's a good way to do it. Is that that an approach? Is that a step we can take to reduce their suffering on the way to abolishing animal slavery? Potentially, yes. Just purely in terms of strategy. That could be one route to take. It seems like a very big deal for people to go vegan overnight. Okay, so why don't you try taking this step and going vegetarian first? Or maybe in the meantime, we can make bigger cages or kill them in a way that they don't feel it as much. But a lesser of two evils is still evil, man. And there's, we shouldn't be looking for the right way to do the wrong thing. So I think that although that's a possibility, something we could work towards, ultimately the goal should be Let's end the Holocaust. Let's end the animal Holocaust. Let's end all animal slavery. I don't think we should be doing this thing. Like I said, it comes back to necessity. When we know that we can get every single essential nutrient we need from a plant-based diet and a B12 supplement, and that's all we need to get it all. You think that's realistic? I do, man. I think it's actually the only realistic way to go because currently (laughs) we're wasting 16 times more um, more land, 13 times more water, 11 times more oil. We're producing 50 times more gas emission, greenhouse gas emissions. Okay. We, are, we are killing ourselves, you know. One in four people die in a heart disease. The number one killer, the only diet proven to reverse heart disease in the majority of patients is a plant-based diet. People are getting diabetes. They're getting different cancers, all these things. We're, we're, it's the only way forward, I believe. And, you know, I'm not just – that's just – not just me saying that, that's United Nations, that's some of the largest environmental protection organizations on the planet. So I think that if we want to move forward, this is going to be the way to do it. Do I think everybody's going to go vegan overnight? Nah, I didn't even do that. Most vegans went vegetarian first or did something or took some steps, but we can all take some steps and we have an obligation, a moral obligation to do better once we know better. Most people don't know better. They think they need to eat animals to survive. They think that they're not going to be able to enjoy vegan food. They have no idea what to cook. They think they can't afford it. But all of those things, you know, there's there's a way and it's cheaper and healthier and easier. And the millions of recipes at our fingertips. So I think you it's say very cheaper. Cheap. Yeah. Cheaper and easier were two that stuck out to me. <laughs> that could not be more false. false. To, to, to us. And no, to, no, 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 okay, no, 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 no. I mean, you can, I, you could lead this one, and I'm sure. I, I'm just saying, like, yeah. it's not cheaper. Well, it's not, definitely well not no, let me explain what I mean. Let me explain right, what right. I mean. Okay, so aside from the fact that you're probably going to be able to do more days at work and have less sick days, you're probably going to not have to be on the table getting your, your chest cut open and have surgeries and pay for all these medical bills because you're reducing your chances of mm. getting many diseases. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, but aside oh, okay, from that, okay, but okay. aside from that, that's totally aside I from that. I see what you're doing. Yeah, that's yeah, just, some, that's that's just that's an fair. added yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I also think too from, from a, like a cost perspective that like we do, we live – 
with a chef. She's cooking high end vegan meals. Like on a baseline, beans and rice, true, like brown true. rice, quinoa, exactly. like the things that give you all your essential Very aminos cheap. and nutrients, yeah. extremely cheap. I, potatoes, I, sweet potatoes, oats. I could be yeah, coerced pasta. to give you cheaper. <laughs> I will never admit easier. All right. Ever. And mind you, yeah. Spencer's a vegan. So it's like the non-vegans <laughs> versus vegans right now. Yeah, and by the way, yeah, I used yeah. I used to be vegan. Andre's a vegan too. That. I, I used to be I used that. to be vegan. Um yeah. I did four months last year, uh, in the first month of this year. Well, 26 days. Yeah, I, I did it with good them stuff. As well. Yeah, we with the house went vegan. Yep. Um cool. Joe, for the month. Pulling up some stats on that, just real quick. For four months of you being vegan, <laughs> you, you saved 132,000 uh, gallons of water, 3,600 square feet of forest, 120 animal lives, and 2,400 pounds of CO2. For how long was that? For four months. For four months. I, so he, I have so many questions. I'm going to, I'm going to try to keep them in line with the conversation. I guess, I guess one of them I, I've talked to Spencer a lot mm. about is I think there are a lot of people out there who automatically see vegan research and they say, no, that's not true. No, that's not yep. true. I have a very different approach. My my response is, I don't know if I believe that. I don't know if I believe that yet. That's because fair. the thing about veganism, and it is even if it's been around for 30 years, is 40, 50, 100, as far as I'm concerned, the research on it and the true wave that we're on right now has been around for 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Sure. It's a new, it's a new thing. People just started talking about it, just started really, really digging into it. So I don't know what the heart disease of a bean eater is going to mm. look like in 40 years. I don't know what the, what the, uh, what the heart disease of a, of a, of a, just a rice and starch and bean and potato eater is going to look like, you know? And so I, I am wide open to listening to the argument, right. but I'm also very uh, reluctant to just trade over on it. Of course. And I, I instead want to rely on just what I've found, which is, an incredibly inconvenient diet that I can never find a place to eat. If I'm at an airport and I'm eating vegan, I'm just going to eat a granola bar because that's all I got. That's mm -hmm. it. Uh, airports can be challenging. Challenging. Yeah. All right. Um, that could be pretty expensive unless you want to just eat, you know, bodega beans and rice. And, uh, and also unless you're really willing to put in the work to eat a lot of fucking food, you're going to lose mass muscle and a lot of other bodily functions you've become used to, right? I, I shit 15 times a day while I'm speaking. <laughs> Literally 15 times a day. Cool, cool. And so, and so, <laughs> basic, and so basing go. it, and so basing it strictly on what I've seen and dealt with myself, I'm still reluctant. I hear you, man. I'm, you know, that's the smartest place to be. I didn't learn all this shit and go, okay, that must be solid. It's a different argument to what I've heard before. So of course I'm going to straight away listen to it. Nah. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't pay attention to what I'd heard. I watched documentaries and that as well, isn't something you just take for face value, but you don't need to be, you don't need a lot of papers and studies to look around and see what's going on in our society, our society of meat, dairy, and egg eaters. People are dying all over the place, man. And it's an epidemic what's happening and things are getting worse. Um, what we have in terms of studies is the blue zone studies, which have been going for a very long time. The largest study ever conducted on the relationship between nutrition and disease, which is the China study, which spanned for decades, which included thousands and thousands of participants. The bottom line of that study was that the optimal amount of animal products in the human diet is zero. And the optimal diet for human health is whole foods, plant-based diet, a vegan diet. Um, in terms of inconvenience, at times it can be inconvenient. There's no doubt about it. We're trying to eat a plant-based diet in a world where every single country is, you know, making food off the backs of animals, but it can definitely be done. I travel all over the world doing it. You know, yesterday I scored a really good uh, meal. It was big basic quinoa, veggies, and some rocket lettuce. It wasn't the perfect meal in terms of, um, you know, what I would have enjoyed to cook, but for an airport, it was good. When you go to Mexican places, any Mexican place, instead of getting meat, you get beans. Instead of getting sour cream, sour cream and cheese, get guacamole. Plantains, there's all that, all that's, you know, any, any Thai yeah. place, just switch the meat for tofu, switch the, co the um, dairy for coconut milk, and you're still having stir fries, you're still having curries. Indian is super easy because most of them are vegetarians anyway. Um, and in terms of eating a whole lot of food, you definitely want to make sure you are eating a lot of food. Um, but 
you know, it doesn't have to be a crazy amount. If you're trying to put on size, we've still got pea protein, we've got rice protein, we've got different protein powders that have just as much protein as what you're used to, except we don't have the, the whey. We don't have the whey in there, which, you know, is um, it comes with the casomorphins, it comes with the animal protein and the, you know, the things basically that we're trying to avoid. In animal products, we have cholesterol, we have the much higher rates of saturated fat, about 95% more saturated fat. We have both of these things that lead, lead to some of the biggest diseases we're yep, faced with. Yep. We can avoid all that by just eating a plant-based diet. And, um, you know, at times, yeah, when it is convenient, when it's inconvenient, it sucks. But I guess for me, I just got to a point where there was times where I was still eating animal products. I'm like, oh, it's going to get thrown away anyway. Fuck it. I'm just going to have it. But then I got to a point where I was like, you know, I don't want to condone this in any way. This is mm. so far out of alignment with who I am as I would never go around stabbing animals, man, or anybody. And when I started seeing animals as somebodies, as individuals with their own experience, very, very similar to ours, it just became a no brainer. So even if the food was going to get thrown out, I thought, good, it should be thrown out. This is trash. This doesn't belong in our bodies, man. This doesn't belong in our temples. This is products of violence, products of suffering. The stress is in there. All that shit is in there. On top of that, it's killing us. Um, so, you know, I just found ways around it and there's a lot of apps like the happy cow app. It tells you all the vegan restaurants in your area, wherever you're at. Um, there's ways to do it, man. So I guess, you know, you just started out and you don't figure all that shit out straight away, but over time you learn, okay, when I go to Mexican, I can have this. When I'm in an area, I can check this app and you know, that you just figure it out yeah. And, and yeah, you, no one's perfect. No one's perfect overnight. And I'm still figuring shit out almost six years on, but it's a journey that's worth walking, man. And every step, you know, of you being a little better adds more light to the world, reduces suffering in this world. Spencer just said that you, for, in four months, was that 130 less animals or something like that? 120. 120, 120 yeah. less animals, man. You know, people eat thousands of beings, thousands of people, non-human people in their life. That is a big deal, man. It's a huge stain on our otherwise civilized society and something that, you know, most people don't even see, we don't see that this piece of meat is actually from a victim of the longest standing Holocaust that has ever happened. And they don't see that they're chowing into the body parts of a murder victim. And that's how I see it now. That's, that's, that's terrifying. You make me feel like a, bad, like a asshole. I don't mean to. I don't mean to, man. I don't think you are an asshole. I don't think are any you, meat did. Uh, are you using scare tactics? <laughs> I'm using every tactic I've got, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, also, mind you, bro, you're talking to like an ex-vegan. Like… Four months is a long time to be vegan. Congrats, what what was the study you uh you you referenced that they they said the healthiest diet is a plant based diet? One of them is the China study. The other is the Blue Zone studies, and they're just checking out the populate. The Blue Zone studies is checking out the populations of the world that have the longest life. Okinawa, longest life right? Life. They were the one of the, them, yeah. the longest living. Yeah, and some of them, it's, 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 I mean, it's at least what? mostly plant based. I mean, I have a, I have a, yeah. I, I just, I, I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get shit on by the vegan community. We're gonna fuck you up, man. <laughs> we're ruthless. You know that. <laughs> I know, I know. Y'all are ruthless, bro. <laughs> but I've been shit on before. And Let's go. I'll get shit on again. <laughs> um, no, they know, they know. The um, the reason I stopped being vegan. Yeah was because I was unhealthy. Tell me. I was unhealthy. I was the lightest I had been since I um, intentionally cut weight for uh, this movie I did called The Thinning, where I was yoked out of my fucking mind. I did like a weak juice cleanse, and I was 182. I was yeah. 182 pounds when I, when I shot this movie. <clears throat> had to literally just pick up, pick my legs up out of bed to, to just to move. I had, mm. I had no mm. strength. And um, when I was vegan… Um, Working out, you know, four hours a day wow. on your eight to 10,000 calorie day diet, had nutritionists, had all the supplements I needed, like was a private chef that was doing everything right. Mm. Um, I got down to 184. I could not, ma wow. I could not maintain weight. I was losing weight. Was I that log picture when you were vegan still? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep pull that up. Yeah. Let's, let's give a gander. So well, give I, I, think, just I, I just don't want to mistake, I just don't want to mistake looking good with feeling good. Uh, yeah. I want to, I want to preface well, how the did fact you that feel, looks, man? How did you feel aside from, like aside shit, from bro. Lane, my, like tell me, what do you mean? My friend George, um, sat me down and he goes, yo, I need to ask you something. And like, this kind of sensitive, um, are you depressed? And no one has ever asked me that in my life. Wow. No wow. one has ever asked me that in my life. And I go, no, I'm not depressed. Like, what do you mean? Um, this is the picture Spencer was referencing. This is when I was vegan. So yeah, like, okay, look you good. Look shit. For sure. Look, I look 
Look dope. Yeah, you're looking good, man. Thanks, bro. Um, <laughs> but he sat me down and asked Your me. Abs was, literally have abs. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, and I and guess when you pull all the all the fat and everything off your body, that's what's left right before the skeleton. Yeah, no. you're like still, that's just you're that. still, let me finish. Yo, let me finish. You're <laughs> vegan though, and you're still carrying trees, bro. Let me <laughs> let me finish. Um, so yeah, and I'm like, no, yo, I'm not depressed. He goes, well, I've never seen this version of Logan Paul. Wow. I, don't know, I don't know who I'm talking wow. to right now, right. and I don't know if it's because you're vegan. I'm like, of course it's not because I'm vegan. Whatever. Yeah. Um. So I I had to stop being vegan about a month before the fight. Uh -huh. I just it was not in a good place mentally, physically, whatever. Sure. So that that was the first time I was like. Okay, I tried it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not for me. No big deal. Yep. January comes around. Here we are again. Yo, mm -hmm. let's go vegan for a month. Cool. Twenty five days in, fucking depressed. I'm seeing I'm him losing sleeping weight. like in the day. I'm sleeping I've never hours seen, like a day? I'll see him wow. just like in bed during the day, and I'm like, hey man, like what's what's going yeah, on? Yeah. Like you want to like get up, get go outside and shit for a little bit? And he's like, no, I'm not really doing much, man. Like yeah, I'm like, I, and so the same thing that George said about him, like I noticed as well. Like he just okay, he wasn't getting out of bed. He was just, and all he would ever say to me was. I just want something that makes me feel whole. Like I, I'm missing something sure, in my sure. diet and I know it's because I'm not right. eating meat. I hear you. Can I respond? Yes, please. All right. Um, That's interesting, man. So I'll just start by saying that I've spoke to literally thousands and thousands of vegans now over the years. And a common theme with 99.9% .9 of them is that going vegan is one of the best things they've ever done in terms of how they feel ethically, but also in their body, man. So there are all, always going to be certain people for whatever reason that it might not work for them, but that isn't necessarily because they started eating a plant-based diet. You mentioned you were training four hours a day. You do this big diet <laughs> switch. You know, I've spoke to a doctor about this, that about people who don't feel good initially. And he said- Felt great initially. Okay, okay, cool. First month was cake. I'd, I'd say, yeah, that's cool. I'd say four months is still pretty initial. Mm -hmm. um, and that it can take time for your body to learn how to assimilate the nutrients and vitamins from plant foods that you were once getting from the meat, things like that. Um, when in that, in that month of January, I don't know, man. I don't know what you were doing. I don't know why you felt that way. I wish I could give you a better answer. All that I can say though, is that meat is like an addiction. And you know, when you come off drugs or any addiction- there can be feelings of not feeling whole or not feeling, you know, whatever. What about, what You've about, been eating this way your entire life and you start trying to eat a different way. It can be cravings. It can be the literal chemicals and hormones and shit like that that is in the food today, no doubt about it. So I don't know if it was maybe something a little more like that, but all I know is this, that there are millions and millions of vegans, including high-level athletes, world record holding strong men, Mr. Universe of a few years ago, UFC fighters, NFL players. Not many. Not many UFC fighters. Not many NFL players. There's still players. some though. There's, there's one or two. Nah, well, whatever it is, there's not Something. that many vegans out there. So comparatively, to have a small amount of the population that are vegan who are also, some of them, becoming world record holding strongmen or elite athletes in some of the most physically demanding sports, I think that's saying something. I don't know if you were doing it right. I don't know if you're getting everything. I don't know if your nutritionist knew their shit. I don't know, man. Maybe it was something totally unrelated. Yeah. I don't know. Well, the, Do you have any? You you live with me. You went through all yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, <sighs> without getting too deep, like that was a time of the year where there was a way more emotional different, it was an emotionally different state. True. Yeah. True. You know, so that could have something to do with it. Um, but the thing I always revert back to is like when we went into the nutritionist, they never said any of your levels were like, yo, you're unhealthy. Like they, you checked yeah, as a yep. perfectly he, healthy he, human. He checked me out. He said I had, every so, level was correct, but also like, so, so I think it's something measure? like it, it, it could be that switch. Like what, I, what, what you were saying, cause yeah. it is very well known that in order to process meats, like we need certain parasites in our body and uh, different things to break them down. So when you go vegan, those things have to flush out and those things aren't, uh, they're not getting the same nutrients like you were talking about. It can so take some time. So many different know. things. I guess I'll say this as well. You know, people don't always quit cigarettes first go and they don't always feel good doing it. You know, sometimes like, fuck yeah, I quit ciggies, man. I'm feeling good. Other times it's hell. And yeah, you know, I don't know, man. It could no, be mind you, I'm going back. I'm gonna cool, be. Man. I don't. I don't cool. know when. I don't know when. Yeah, but like, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna give it a third chance. I'm gonna. I'm gonna Sweet. try to do since it something. What, since what? I mean, from what? what? You hated it, bro. I I, like, yeah, I hated it. I. I, I, but, I gotta, but, I, but, why did you hate it though? Because you just said to me 
that you were, apart from when you started feeling bad, initially yeah. you were feeling good. You were enjoying the Impossible Burgers. Yeah. You're still training four hours a day, so. No, no, not, not in January. Oh, okay, not okay, January. cool, cool, cool. Here's why, here's why I hated it. Yeah, yeah. I don't like being depressed and sleeping 12 hours a day. One. No doubt, nobody does. Number two, we were traveling. That's not a common or, side effect though, <laughs> but okay, go on. When we were traveling or going anywhere, <clears throat> the inconvenience that I was for people mm -hmm. was simply too much for me to handle. I, I want everyone I to be happy and fucking assimilate Bro, and do their I thing. I understand and that. I think that there's a way to do it that you are not inconveniencing people so much. Like I understand that, you know, it's it's can be socially awkward at times to be like, oh, that looks good, but oh, uh, well I actually, just, uh, yeah, yeah. for this ethical reason, I think you're a piece of shit, but that's not what you actually mean, but that's what they're hearing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I don't eat that food because ethical re reasons. And they're like, oh, you think you're better than me? What do you think this is sort of thing? Um, I think that there's a, you find ways to just be – people know you and or you bring your own shit or they just accommodate because they know that you're serious about this thing. Yeah. And, man, like just – I don't know a lot about you if I'm honest, brother, but from what I do know, you know, you're a guy who's trying to do good shit and and you're, you're a good-hearted person. And ultimately, you know, there's a way to find – you can find a way to do it, but I think when you've got the motivation because you really are aware – that you will be living in alignment more with who you really are, man. Like what you're contributing to when you pay for meat, dairy, or eggs is so fucking far from an act of love or kindness or respect. It is literally the opposite direction. We treat those animals, you know, worse than the, your worst nightmare doesn't even come you close. And so when you really understand that this is such a such a such a bad act such a cruel violent act something that you would never actually contribute to yourself or pay for it to happen if you really understood the whole picture when you really get it and you've seen this footage and you've heard those screams and you've looked these innocent beings in their eyes just like just like pearl man when you look her in the eyes and you realize pearl that, bing bing my pig yeah it's Good not pearl bing it's bing. not just it's not just you know, about loving dogs and loving dolphins and loving other humans. It's about extending a circle of compassion to embrace all beings. See, I didn't, ha I didn't have that, what you just described, energy fueling me. I was being fueled by like, oh, I'll try it because I like to try totally. things because cool, I cool. don't want to experience everything, you know. But yeah. maybe one day I will like, I will, uh, I will shift. Um, I, I have I, a question. Yeah, I, want, I wanted to dive in and this no, guy? no, 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 not yet. You, you will first. I, I just have a quick question I, around. Uh, kind of like the newness of, of things mm. too. And I, I, I want to go back to the past, you know, a couple thousand years or a few yep. thousand years of time and how, and I'm sure you've got combat for this as well, but you know, we, as a, as a human species mm -hmm. have eaten meat. We were in my eyes, we're given large chomping teeth and canines to tear through flesh, right. For protein. Um, and another, even on another note, uh, when I look at the people who probably want to live the longest in this world, mm -hmm. the, the billionaires the, with the with the beautiful boats and models and everything, they're all still eating meat, right? And so, and they're not and, living and, the and longest, and, and, and maybe they're not living the longest. But what is it that this small swell of people yep. knows that no one else knows that the thousands of years worth of civilizations mm -hmm. before us didn't know? And like, what is it that gives you guys this? Uh, this assurance that you guys know something that no one else does or no one else did. Yeah, yeah, I hear where you're coming from, man. I mean, it isn't as new as you might think. A lot of old, you know, wise people were talking this way about extending our circle of compassion to all beings. That's actually an Einstein Keep quote. that up. Leonardo da Vinci spoke about it. Um, Gandhi, many other people spoke about animal rights just being a logical progression from human rights. You know, there's actually no fundamental, there's no characteristic that separates us from them that justifies enslaving them, but not each other. So if we're not going to, if we're all going to agree that enslaving each other is wrong, we should extend that to other sentient beings who would also have a problem with that. If you, if you look at the situation from the victim's point of view, it becomes very easy to, to see that things like humane slaughter and all that kind of thing don't make any sense. Now, yes, we have been eating meat for thousands and thousands of years. We've been going to war for thousands of years. People have been getting raped. Children are being getting abused, we've been murdering each other. The length of time that something's been happening does not does not uh, make it ethical or not or something we should continue. And yeah. when it comes to when it comes to what do we know that's different, what we know now and what I learned when I was 26 
is that we can live and thrive without animal products. That's something we didn't know for sure before. We had ideas, there were certain examples, but now we have science that's caught up that's really solidified this as fact and proven to us that yes, we don't, we can get everything we need from a plant-based diet. So I think that's one of the biggest things, man. Because before I did not give a shit. When I saw footage of animals get slaughtered, I was like, cool. What do you, you want me to feel guilty about that? I'm human. I need to eat animals to survive. But after understanding that actually we don't, watching that footage again and seeing these animals get stabbed and pushed into gas chambers and electrocuted to death, I was like, okay, if we don't need to do this to be healthy, what are we doing this for? Because they taste what good. Are, yeah, what about people that just want to eat meat and they just literally you know, just don't care? That's, they want yeah, their steak. The flyover states they want, that I'm talking like it, middle America. Oh, and I, for sure. For sure, Look, but man, I also don't think that it's, I don't think it's absent from the coastlines either. No, I don't no, think, no. You know, it's I think everywhere, you've got, man. You've got bankers on Wall Street the best thing. that want to go get their A10 Wagyu for sure. or Kobe and they want to sit down and they want to chomp into an $800 steak for sure. and they don't give a fuck if you give them two extra years on the end of their life because they're going to be 92 years old anyway so they don't give a shit yeah. so what do you say to those people I mean is it is it too far gone at that point I, I or think what? nobody's too far gone you never know who's going to change I've seen slaughterhouse workers go vegan hunters go vegan anybody can just make that connection it's a con it's reconnecting we have that connection when we're children we love animals we don't want to hurt animals they're our best friends they're the main characters of all our favorite stories it's it's taken from us we're taught no no these animals pat these animals kill and it's a it's a selective compassion and i really do believe it's a form of brainwashing that is inside our culture right indoctrination, now indoctrination 100 yeah. man yeah. we're taught we need meat for protein which basically means if you don't eat meat you're gonna die that's kind of how people interpret it and people like that it's hard because you know you try to get them to connect to an animal they might even not connect to empathy for other humans Each other, yeah exactly like you know what it is there's racism still around there's sexism still around this is called speciesism you know it's a very similar thing mm -hmm. why people thought they were superior to black people they enslaved them they made them do what they wanted uh, men did the same with women and humans do the same with many other species what do you do about it i just hope that you know where we're going environmentally from what i've heard if you believe the united nations and these big environmental organizations they're saying that we have to do this. We have to go plant-based. And luckily, don't worry, you can still have meat. We just got vegan meat. Tastes the same. You're not even going to notice a difference. We'll put it in the meat section for you. And I guess that's what they're going to end up just eating. Can I actually convince this person? No, you are vegan at heart. Ethically, this is what you should do to live in alignment with who you are. And you're going to feel so much better. It's the right thing for you to do. I'm probably not going to be able to convince them that way. Maybe not the health way either. So I hope that just the food you know, just overtakes and it just doesn't make sense for people. You've got meat that is a corpse from an animal who suffered and screamed that destroys the planet, that kills our health. And then you've got this plant-based meat that tastes the same, looks the same, smells the same, is at least comparably priced, potentially even cheaper, better for the environment. Why would people still choose this other one if it's right there? And that's what we're starting to see now, this, this big influx of plant-based products that are just it just would make more sense to choose them for everybody, even those people who are so obsessed with meat. We're also working on plant-based, uh, sorry, um, cell-grown cell grown uh, meat. I, now I, I was going to go there eventually, but you just hit it. And I, I think that is the solution. So I spent yeah. time over two summers ago with one of the leading cell growth experts on creating meat in laboratories. And yeah. so I, so I have this conversation with you openly and, and, you know, for almost for fun, because I think that within the next 10 to 20 years, we're going to have this solved through cell, through laboratory grown meat. To Me be too, honest man. With you. And look, I think that that's good and bad. Like I'm so happy about that for all the, like we kill 8 billion animals every day. Yeah. You know, it's 74 billion Land animals a year oh, and 2.7 trillion sea animals a year. <sighs> they feel pain too, all those animals. They're just Dude, in the water. Did you say 2.7 trillion? Yeah, man. That's a lot. Yeah. Holy fuck. That's an estimate, you know, you know how many, at that you, point. You know how many sharks it is a year? There's just a fun fact on a specific animal. Yeah, it's scary. 100 million. Right. Which is crazy yeah. when I first heard for that. A lot of it's for shark fin. Yeah. Soup. Oh, yeah. 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 So now, that's I'm, the yeah, sad part cool. about and like… bycatch. Yeah. Bycatch from salmon and tuna and things like that. Mm. I um, I'm… So stoked on lab grown meat, man. That is going to change the game. And and I couldn't be more happy about it. I couldn't support it more. You know, if that if we can get meat that is exactly steak, but no one had to die and suffer from it, fuck yeah, let's That's go. That's tight, bro. That's the it's shit. Crazy. But but what I really want also is people to connect, man, to reconnect to their compassion for other beings, even if they look different. Cause I think that's a really big missing piece of our culture right now where 
we look at them as less than us, even though they're not necessarily in the ways that matter. And I think that this can be also the start of discrimination in other areas. Like if, imagine if you're born into a family that teaches you that we don't even take honey from bees because that's their food. And we don't take the milk from the cows because that's for the calves, that's for the baby cows. And we respect all animals. And you're born into this. How much harder is it going to be for you to grow up and be racist when you already see beings that look so different from you as your equal on many levels? It's going to yeah. be a lot harder. There's, wait, there's wait, big I, studies coming out right now that are showing that the first disconnect, the true disconnect is knowing that the dog you pet and the pig you eat. Because if you go to the other side of the earth, that's the opposite. You can eat the dog, can't eat the pig. Mm. So it's like that's two different viewpoints and you're growing up. You're going to meet somewhere and realize that you're fighting. There's two fighting ideals there. Mm. That's very interesting. Yeah, that's interesting that, sure. that's very interesting. Um, and I wonder how that affects. Because like we we see yeah. social media influencers all the time posting videos of dogs being killed. Yeah. But then you go over there and dogs are infesting the streets. And the only way they can do that is to kill them. And they, I mean, they're throwing them in like boiling pots. Like yeah, it's yeah. disgusting. Mm -hmm. um, but I, they don't, they don't think anything of it. I have to, I have to raise a a red flag for, for one belief. Maybe it's a, a little cynical or maybe I'm a little too like. Realism here, but you, keep, you you you've said it twice now that yep. um, humans look as at animals as lesser than yep, them. Yep, yep. Like yo, when I see a squirrel outside, I'm sorry, I am superior to that squirrel. In what way? Do you believe that or no? Well, in what way? Are you My life is more valuable than the squirrel's life. Do you believe that? I believe to you it is. I believe to the squirrel, the squirrel's life is more valuable. True. The squirrel yeah. though did not found a civilization. Neither that did is you. I'm a human, human. You didn't do that shit though. You, I did not do my, okay, my me, ancestors did. And yeah, their yeah, ancestors yeah. Okay. Did. And they do cool shit too, but I, okay. So you are definitely superior in many ways. The reason why humans have got to this point in civilization isn't because we have a super special brain or something like that. It's because we have a sophisticated voice box that's given us the ability to create a complicated language, which we've used to share information and build and build and build and build on that over many, many, many years. But don't you think that has to do with having a super special brain? No, actually. I think it's just got to do mostly with our ability to share information and grow on that. Like if, if I've put if I put some humans out in, you know, the wilderness somewhere, they're not gonna be popping out iPhones, man. And they're gonna be just like every other animal. If you gave them two thousand years, yes, they would. What about a pose but, but without but without the voice box, potentially not, man. And regardless, regardless. So let's just say that, let's just say that you are superior to the squirrel. Do I believe you're superior to squirrel? I'll say again, in many ways, yes. I'll tell you what I see when I see a squirrel out there. I'm like, whoa, look at that little person. I say person, that's basically how I see it, but I'll be a bit more specific because I know people will maybe, maybe find that strange. A non-human person, but a little person with a family, with probably with friends, um, with a community, with ways of communicating, with a home, they eat, they breathe, they sleep, they feel pain, trying they to get suffer. A nut. That's right, just, man. They're trying to get trying a nut to get too. A nut. No doubt. Yo, we yo, share yo. something in common. These we got it all, nut. man. Let's they're see. just they're just our, respect, they're our dog. They're our fam too, bro. They're our extended fam. They're our cousins in feather scales, wings, and fur. I see them as part of the fam. And um, I didn't see that before. I just was like, I didn't give a shit about them. I didn't think twice about them. They're out there having fun. They're yo, out here yo, having yo, stress. That's mad fucking noble. But I hope if mm -hmm. there was ever a scenario where someone held me in a squirrel hostage and he said, I'm going to kill one of these people, <laughs> you say, please kill the squirrel instead of Logan. Logan, I would do that for you, man. Thanks, But let guy. me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because you had him on your podcast. Damn and right. it's the number one podcast in, <laughs> in the, the world. world. That's the reason why. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, man. It's because I understand your experience more. And so I would- Well, I'm a human, man. You, of course. You're a human, but, Any human has experienced more. Yeah, well, you know, we're all animals though. We all are animals. Yeah. You're a human animal. That's a squirrel animal. We're all animals. Yeah. So let, let's see it from a bigger picture here. If, if we had a squirrel and Hitler, I'm saving the squirrel. I'm not always going to save the human. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, it's Respect. still a preference. Yeah, that squirrel's lit. Yeah, that squirrel's killing a <laughs> good What about, like, what about okay, people? Okay, that, okay. <laughs> what about, yeah, it's, I, I think that's a good point. It's all it's all perspective. Of like, you know, if we're in an ocean and there's a great white swimming around, I'm, I'm throwing that spear at it. I'm saving my boy. Fuck yeah, me but, too. But, you know, to kill 700 million a year for soup, you know, and I'm not all of that's for soup, obviously, but a lot of it is. It's like, damn, bro, as a civilization, there is a disconnect there. There's no denying that. Yeah, let's just have the other soup with the mushrooms instead of the shark. Yeah. What about like, what about people that say that uh, there's a certain amount of um, 
killing of animals mm. that needs to take place to raise soy or to raise other vegetables yeah. that are needed to sustain a plant based like where, basically oh, where do you point. draw where that's do you draw point. the line like what that if dude, that dude what if Joe I, Rogan said that yeah. I don't even want to yeah, say yeah, his yeah, name but Ted Nugent <laughs> yeah had yeah, some yeah, things yeah. to say about it but like a little what bias. if what if a what if a small group of really cute non person uh, squirrels yeah. non person humans no, are yeah. trying to eat your corn and if they eat your corn you die yeah then of course what? then well, what? self defense is a perfectly reasonable response and you obviously do whatever you can do by causing the least amount of harm as practically possible that's all veganism is it's not perfection there's no way to be perfect we're going to cause some harm i'm killing animals too i probably <laughs> stepped on ants on my way here the food that i get the food production the way it is right now animals are killed in crops it's a very small amount comparatively and also like you mentioned soy for example i'm i think it's about 80 percent of the world's soy is fed to fatten up animals so what we're doing is we're growing all this food, we're giving it to animals, we give them up to 15 times more food than what we can take from them. So we feed them, feed them, feed them, feed them, then we get back this tiny little bit of food. So that means we're wasting a shitload of food and resources and land and everything else. We are having all these accidental crop deaths times 15, plus we're slaughtering the animals. So we, can, we can't be perfect. And I think what will happen is, you know, as plant-based, as a vegan ethic starts to take hold more and more and more, what we'll see is we're trying to figure that shit out too. I don't want crop deaths, man. Let's figure out some better machines so we're not killing these little mice and whatever. But until we have a better option, we do what veganism is. We cause the least amount of harm as practically possible. Now, no one's perfect, man. I got on a plane to be here. I know that that causes some environmental shit. I get in a car. I've got an iPhone. I do, you know, I do my best though, but by far, by such a long way, easily the worst thing that any of us are contributing to in terms of suffering and in terms of environmental is consuming meat, dairy, or eggs by far. So I think the smartest thing to do is to look at, okay, what's the biggest thing we're contributing to and can we eliminate that? And that 100%, yes, we can. And then we go to the next thing. Okay, let's use some less plastic. Let's do this and that. But that even plastic, that's a big fucking deal. But comparatively to meat, dairy, and eggs, consuming that shit, supporting that shit, creating a demand for that, doesn't even come close. That is by far the worst thing in regards to violence, suffering, environmental destruction, and also our own health shit. What, what about really quick? Quickly, where? What about the cheese and eggs? So I, so mm. I, the meat, well, like that's a, good, uh, the, that's a just, good question. Uh, and I, and I, I think I know what your answer is, but I want to hear it. Like I love if you allowed us when we were in January when we were going through that month, if you had allowed us to still have like a, a nice omelet with some cheese in it, yep. man, I probably would have been like, this is pretty good. Like I could do bean <laughs> omelets. I can lunch, do that forever. You know what I'm saying? For forever. lunch, we could okay, do some okay. eggs and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so now it's almost like you move into this like even grayer area. We don't want to eat meat because you're killing animals. Okay, so mm. we stop that. But now we also don't want you to eat stuff the, the that's produced of- with them. And so then it's like, all right, so not only do we want not want to kill the animals, but we also don't really want to bother them because like, you know, they should be just moving around having yeah, their yeah, grass yeah. and like, just like, you know, if they want to watch a flick, like that you, kind man. of stuff. You know? I, I thought the same thing for a long time. That's why I was vegetarian for a long time first. It's very clear to connect with meat that has been cut off an animal's body. You yeah. know, they suffered, you know, they died. Yeah. When it comes to egg and eggs and dairy, the industries are at least as cruel. The dairy industry, for example, the cows, they don't just give milk naturally. You know, they, I mean, naturally, yes, but they don't just always give milk. Just like a human, they need to be pregnant or have mm. recently given birth. For that to happen, for us to get this milk, they put them into a box, which is commonly referred to as a rape rack. A human will shove their arm deep inside the cow's anus to maneuver her cervix and inject her vagina with bull semen. And we know what we would call that if we had a human in there. So these animals, they obviously don't want that to happen. That's why they're stuck in this small box so that they can put this procedure on them. They kick, they bark, they don't want it. They have a nine-month pregnancy like a human. They give birth. When they give birth, the humans want to drink the milk. Obviously, they don't want the babies drinking it. So they separate the mothers from the babies, which I've seen in in real time in um, in a dairy on, in Israel. A guy brought a wheelbarrow in. He threw the baby in there. He wheeled the barrow out, uh, the baby out, and this mother was hot on his heels, man, trying to chase. And she started bellowing and crying, which they often do for days, pointing in the same direction they last saw their baby. They're very maternal animals. The baby boys are seen as a waste product because they'll never produce milk. So they get sent to the slaughterhouse almost immediately. At the slaughterhouse, the most humane method 
is to put a bolt gun to the head. It fires a metal bolt through their skull into mm-hmm. their brain that stuns them. And then they're either opened up, like their, their body, their neck is sort of opened up on a table or they're hung upside down. And then they get stabbed in the throat. They move the knife around and they, they cut their throat open and they bleed out. That's the baby boys. This is terrifying. This fucked up, man. It doesn't get oh, much worse shit. than this shit. The, then the, the, the sisters of those baby boys, when they're old enough, they're impregnated. And then they are also used as a milk slave. That's their entire life. For five to seven years is as long as they can last. They, they hook them up to these machines. They take their milk. There's pus in this shit. There's all the hormones. There's all the cruelty. And then they every year they repeat this process of re-impregnating them, taking their babies again. Five to seven years is all they shit's, can do. Shit's fucked. Then they fucking send them to the slaughterhouse. And this these cows, man, they can live 20, 25 years. So they're just severely you know like use like machines basically yeah egg industry is just the same yeah those little baby chicks those little cute little yellow chicks all the boys they're sent into a machine called a macerator which is like a blender Mm -hmm. they drop off a conveyor belt into this machine that just literally shreds them to pieces if you could imagine if it was you that there was this big machine and you got dropped into it and it shred you into pieces man like that's what the fuck that is like a fucking nightmare i don't want to do that you know that's like horror movie shit and that's, that's how you get eggs. You buy the eggs. That's what happens. You shred little baby chicks. So for me to stop eating eggs, I started thinking, all right, if I'm going to eat eggs, I'm going to imagine throwing a little baby chick into a blender. I can't do that. I'll just have tofu scramble instead. It's got all the protein, tastes the same, super easy to make, cheaper, and none of the cholesterol and none of the baby chick shredding. Um, so it, sucks. It, it sucks that you have to be so… Uh graphic and real to to really un- understand what's happening man because it's so it's yeah, so I'm much sorry. easier to, no it's 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 necessary and it I, is man no, and you know 100%, what because it's so easy to ignore it it's so, but when you when you say what you're saying i'm like mm. do you know what though man it's i fucking hate saying it um because it doesn't even anywhere near do it justice like even yeah, even yeah, if i yeah, show yeah. it to you even I, if, I, I believe you even I believe if i sh- but yeah. even if i show it to you that doesn't do it justice either like what we really need to do is imagine feeling it and that's basically impossible to do because we're so privileged. We've never really suffered most of us in our lives. So even to try to connect and understand and have empathy for their suffering, it's on such another level that you you don't even comprehend it what at if, all, basically. What if you are someone who can understand what these animals are going through? I mean, I mean, that's that's even a reach to even try to get close, but like there's a lot of people in third world countries who are yeah. suffering and again, not even close to what the animals that you're describing, what they're going Maybe. through. But, um, you know, are, are what's, what are the vegan statistics in the middle of Africa in the Philippines? Like, yeah, I is, mean, is it prominent there? Are they still, I, I assume that it's less prominent. You know what we, the benefit of what we've got here is we've got the education. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these third world countries though, are on a plant-based diet by default because it's just cheaper. Um, but I don't know the statistics. I know the vegan movement sort of happened worldwide, you know, at a no. different level in different places. But That's where the China study came from. Yeah, yeah. Is that they weren't studying like all vegans. They were just studying the majority of the diet, if mm. I'm not mistaken. So yeah. like when you look at Okinawa, for example, they still eat seafood, but their average age that they live to is 100. Like average. Yeah. So they're eating primarily like sweet potatoes and like a mix of vegetables. So, mm. yeah, I, I think, think there, yeah, there's certain areas though, like, you know, sub-Saharan areas where like they eat raw meat, they don't even cook the meat. And so I think you're able to get a lot more nutrients from eating raw meat than yeah. you are it being processed in a factory. I yeah. think that it does help to have had an experience of suffering, which most of us have, um, you know, like for example, it's much easier for mothers I've found to, uh, relate to dairy cows yeah. because they they know what mastitis feels like which is the the painful udder infection that cows get you know human women can get that as well um and they imagine what it would be like to have their baby taken from them and to have this process go that's actually a short documentary called i think it's called the herd which is basically that whole concept of humans being used for their milk and and that's always a good way to think of it like what if it was humans in this situation how would i feel about it that helps me a lot to sort of navigate through, you know, trying to make yeah. good choices. It seems extreme. Like when you were saying that at first, it's, it sounds extreme. But then, you know, I try to like take myself back to if I was living like just, you know, 80 years ago during the Holocaust, like, and I knew that that was going on, mm. I'd be like, yo, like, let's go over there and like end this shit. And that one, yeah. that yeah. one, I, I was going to go one place, but on that, on that note, I, it's harder for 
for me at least, I don't know about you, to put those in the same category because obviously you're talking about literally people that are, mm-hmm. and, and like obviously it, it, this is not a superiority thing. That, well, that's, like, that's, but it that's is why it's a that's conversation. What, well, I mean, that's why I, I sort of raised a red flag on that one thing because sure. like. Well, let me ask this question then because this, the, this is what it comes down to. You said it's not a superiority thing. So tell me then, what is the characteristic that humans do or do not possess or animals do or not possess? What do you think is so different about us that makes it one of them so much less bad than the other? I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's less bad. And listen, like, let me, let me clarify. Like, I, I think we, for, for me personally, my movement is to, is to push myself to use people who at least support humane practices, mm-hmm. hope, and I know hope and prayers don't are, aren't the only answer sometimes, but hope that we as a society continue to move towards more humane practices while simultaneously doing better on the research side. I don't think your yep. solve here or your solve here is going to be through some massive change in human human consciousness. It ain't coming. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, dude, but we're we're struggling just to get people to not rape and kill out there. And so not really. It, like think of it may, this may, way. Maybe, but but let, but let me finish sorry, that point. May, maybe you're right. Not and obviously not everybody's doing that, but there's still a lot That's of the difference. There's still a lot of shit going on out there. That's what I'm getting. Of at, course, right? there is. Fuck so yeah. I I think that it, 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 simultaneously you have these two things. You have research and and better non meat meat products. Mm you know, happening at the same time as, as, as this other thing. And I think that's where we get there. I just don't know that you'll ever see this like true consciousness shift. It'll be many different ways up the mountain and I'm working with all of them, you know, because they all, whatever helps. But you said people still raping and murdering. They are man, but you're not. And neither are you bro. And most people are not. They already agree that shit is fucked and we don't want that in our society. Most people are paying for animals to be raped. They're paying for animals to be murdered. Almost everybody's paying for that. So that's one thing that we could easily just be like, oh, you know what we could eliminate? A fucking shitload of animal rape and animal murder like that if we all just did what vegans are already doing, which really isn't very hard. Yeah. I've got one more quote I wanted to say based on what you just said. Um, it is Captain Paul Watson of Sea Shepherd. And he said, "If something like this, he said, if you – want to know where you would have stood during the civil rights movement, you know, on slavery. Don't ask yourself where you stand on slavery today. Ask yourself where you stand on the animal rights movement. That's fucked up, dude. You can't say that. that, (laughs) By by, by the way, that dude, Paul said, by the way, that dude is the man I've spent, I've spent quite a bit of time with him. He is fucking incredible. And one of the biggest uh, animal rights activists in the world, like Mm, absolutely absolutely incredible. Like he goes and actually hunts, people who hunt animals. Yes, like that's, cool. that's, that's tight. Fucking, I would love to do and, that. And we way, talked about that with them. Um, what I would, I would love to hunt poachers, dude. Yeah, yo, we there, should, we his, should link up with him potentially. Oh, he, have you heard of this guy? No, he's, he's no, the, one with the, the, the Japanese people and the Chinese people that illegally whale. Like they kill oh, whales. Oh, oh yes. This, okay. The sea shepherd He'll is the guy. He'll go board who, their boat yeah. and literally like shut them down. Bro, bro it's that's intense. mind blowing. Oh, that's intense. fucking Yo, yeah. see, that's the shit I was built for. They, I was built for that, bro. They kill Wolf. the whales and then dump them back into the ocean. That's after. awesome. Yeah, there's that is cool. Yeah. It is cool. But, but, uh, but I, I, I cannot uh, say how much I disagree with that comparison, That the, the quote that got us to talk about Well, again, thing. again, it's because of your own discrimination. So I just ask you again, man, and tell me if you can answer this question. Okay. What is it? What is it about other species that you view as yeah, so I less? An, I didn't answer. Yeah, like if you got an answer, I'd love to hear it. Because- mine, mine, my answer is the is the the depth of the human mind. Okay, that would be my so, answer. So, the ability so what do you mean to, by that? The ability to dig deep down, find solutions to problems that okay. that we as a society face. Um, look, 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 let, let, me, let me help you. Let me help you. Yeah, let me help you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, because yes, you're right, but it goes deeper than that. And also, like, uh, it's even ridiculous to, I think, dive into this because it's very obvious the human brain is unparalleled when it comes to any form of species on planet in, in Earth. In what way, brother? And what about the humans who who don't have that? What about yeah. the humans who don't have that ability? Do we think, okay, well, you're not as smart as us. You can't create this shit, this technology, or whatever. So you're good. You're fair game. We don't do that. It's just purely based on, no, they're part of the human species. And that's what I'm talking about. It's it's a form of discrimination. It's called speciesism. You're saying just because, because if it was that, if it was that trait that you just said, if it was, no, it's because we have this depth of mind. Not all humans have that. No, it's because we're more intelligent. Not all humans are that intelligent. So it's not those things. It, when you come down to it, it's because 
we're human. And just because we're human or just because we're white or just because we're men, they're not good justifications for viewing yourself as, you know, uh, as more superior than others. Now we are superior in some ways, but the, the core of it, I'm not saying are we smarter in some ways and some animals are smarter than some humans. Yeah. Uh, what I'm saying is how do we, what trait, there must be a fucking important trait. There's four. Okay, there must be, they must be good then because what we're talking about is condoning throat slitting and we're talking about condoning. No, 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 no. See, that's where I'm going to have to, I, 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 I highly disagree okay, there. Tell me. Like it's a, it, while that comparison in a way is truthful, mm -hmm. I do believe it is a bit of a cynical leap to go from there to there. Um, well, that's how every animal product gets on your plate. I yes, and I hear you. Okay, okay. So, I hear so you. what do you? Like, what, like, what are your so the characters? I, I just this this the graphic scare tactic is it, is it it gets old. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to help you connect, man. Like that's what every animal product you have. That's literally what happened. I I, I you know. Well, I'm, let's I'm not just, say every because there is there is responsible. Do we do we honey that goes on? Do we no, honey? No, no, no. Why is honey vegan? Nah, animal products. These they, two vegans they, eat honey. Okay, so we can talk about that later. Oh shit, you guys <laughs> you are guys in trouble. trouble man. Bad <laughs> vegans. I think, man, that um, you know, I don't mean to I don't I don't like to say throat slitting so much, but I guess the reason I do that is because you can't have meat without it. Or or electrocuting or whatever. You can't have dairy from the shop or eggs from the shop without without the violence. So, you know, all right, I won't say throat slitting no more if that no, but, it doesn't you, bother. It doesn't bother me. I just like, I think it's a way to pull on people's emotions for us. I'm for, really not trying to do that. I'm really trying to just remind you that, hey, you know how bad throat slitting is in our society? Why, why are we so quick to condone it for other species? And that's, and that's just my question that I keep coming back to. What is it about humans? What is it about us? What trait do we possess that is so much more special than other animals? You're saying it's depth of perception and, and awareness. And all the ancillary, well, if you oh, think about it, ancillary if subjects that come along with that. Like you said, voice box, the they, ability they speak to- too. No, I understand yep. that. Yep. But I, I, listen, at, at the end of the day, I you 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 don't have to go too far to pull my strings. I have a lot of feelings and I hate I hate it. And I think I, I will continue to turn a blind eye to it. And that's just how I'll continue to live on Maybe. because I like eating steak. We'll see, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But- Back to my biggest point is that I think we just need to continue the research and get, like there, there have been tons of other species rights and human rights mm -hmm. violations over the course of the past several thousand years that have been solved through research. Some have been solved through conscious shifts, but a lot of them have been solved sure. through research well, or you, a combination of okay, both. Okay, sure. And I, and I think the solve for this is when we're able to put something on someone's plate where they say this is quite literally sure. as good as what I would have had Absolutely. as if a, as if this animal's throat got slit. On a mass but, scale. But, on a mass, yeah, scale. On a mass scale. And, and readily, but we don't readily have to available. Wait for that. But we don't have to wait for that. You don't have to wait for that. And you also, one other point, you don't have to agree that um, we are equal. And I'm just saying on some level, we're not equal on every level. I'm just saying our right to live our lives free plus, from plus exploitation. There's, plus there's certain animals that are far more advanced than us. Like for dolphins, sure. for example, you know, in yeah. certain ways. But you can communicate. And, people eat, and people, some people eat dolphins. Yeah, so it's exactly. like, and it's some like, people I eat think, humans. Some people eat humans for too. For sure. And I think we're, I think like, as we continue to go on, I think uh, maybe it's, it's it, it pains me to say it a little bit. Yeah. And I hate to say it, but I think they may just be a little bit ahead of the curve. Of course. And I hate, yeah, I hate why does that pain I, you to say I that? I don't know. I, because I, I, I hate that's being, true. No, because I, I hate mm. being there, but but whatever. That that kind of is what it is. And and yeah. well, I a, think I think once it's you coming put fast. a once you put a ribeye on my on my plate yeah. that I can cut into and maybe they've they've fashioned it so it bleeds a little and it's yeah, grown yeah, in a yeah. lab, whatever, I will hunt every motherfucker that ever slits the throat of a cow for the Fuck rest yeah. of my life Fuck after yeah. that. Do that okay, like straight up. But just, like, as of right now, well, even even the substitutes, the substitutes, they're getting there. I, I told yo, you. Yo, yo, I agree with you, bro. I, I have to say, you are a better person than me right, right now. now. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I want to go oh, back maybe to in some you ways. Yeah, maybe. Well, go for it. Real, you real said, quick too, like on that note, like, because I think that is a common misconception with people who are vegan is like, they want to come off as better. I definitely don't agree with you with that because maybe I'm Wait, more, 
uh, maybe I'm more aware that? of who said that they want to come off as better. <laughs> no, he, that? no, 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 no. Some He's vegans feel for that. Some, no, you, yeah. I mean, yeah. you just said like you're a better person than me. I think that's true because of. But your- I'm just I'm just saying that a lot of people think on on the other note that we're coming across as trying to be better, and it's not that. It's like you're maybe more aware of of exactly. certain things of health. But you're more aware of things from a creative standpoint, maybe, well, just as a comparison. Okay. So that doesn't make me better. That doesn't make you better. It's more like every, each person has a different thing that they can bring to the table. Mm-hmm. And so I think like vegans as a community have something new uh, to bring to the table, quite literally. Mm. And there's also <laughs> freaking annoying vegans like fuck PETA. Yeah. Yeah. So totally. I think like they there's some good shit. Though. Yeah. But yeah, they also can be annoying as fuck. So yeah. earlier you said, um, well, first of all, let me just touch on that point. I definitely don't think I'm better than anybody. That's exactly why I'm vegan. You know, I don't, I don't feel that way at all. I feel that I, I feel very, very grateful to have learned some information that um, enabled me to make choices that cause far, far less harm. That makes me feel very, very good. And I don't want this to be an exclusive club. Like, nah, we want to be better than everybody. No, the total opposite. I want everybody part of this crew, man, because I want all this. I want these slaughterhouses closed down forever. Yeah. Earlier, you said um, you, you made a joke, man. It was just a joke, though. But something about oh boy, you, no, no, I was chill. It's something <laughs> about you being you be, like me seeing you as an asshole or whatever. And I just don't like not at all. You know, um, no, 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 no. You, you, just as a joke, though. You I, no, no, I said you're making me feel like an. Ah, oh, okay, okay, cool. I didn't. No, no, uh, not right. making me see. I'm just saying. You know, when you when you go as as graphic as you do, and which I said also, yeah, by yeah, the way, yeah. is necessary. Yeah, it, it does make people go. Oh, shit, am I doing the right thing? In fact, that's yeah. I believe you iterated why you even started to consider that being a vegetarian or going vegan because you saw the documentaries totally, because you got totally. involved because you saw the, yeah. the graphic you the images were placed in your mind where you uh were f- forced to go to a place of veganism yeah um i guess what i was just I'm, trying to say though is that you know i don't judge anybody man like we're all on our own path uh, and you can't help what the information you've got you can't help the level of empathy you've got mine's grown a lot like we're all yeah. growing we're all trying to lift each other up and be better you I, have a, I have a question for you too, just out of curiosity, like g- genuine curiosity. Um, do you think that we should show or educate kids in school where meat really comes from and like how it's how it's made, like how their lunch is put on their plate? Do you think that would be? I absolutely, good? yeah. I dude, I am. I don't think. Like, do you remember there, ever watching a video? No, never. I, never, I, never. I, I didn't. Nah. I, don't I don't think I really found out. Until I, I don't think 20s. there should be a sprinkle of macro thought i don't think there should be a sprinkle of knowledge that is not available for people to uh, absorb you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying um including meat like i uh the the more people know the better i think the better the the world's gonna be and i and i think uh you know if i was raised differently sure maybe i'd i'd be vegan right now but i was never yeah uh, yeah ever ever shown that you know and and also like try shit that's why like you know, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm kind of contesting you because I know like a lot of people are uh, iffy about veganism. Try it. Try it. Try everything mm, once. Yeah, like yeah, go yeah. for it. See if it works for you. It's fucking dope. It's good. It's great for a lot of people. It's changed a lot mm. of fucking lives. It's Fuck sick. Yeah. I'm going to go back. I said it. I'm going to go back. Yeah. I was just iterating my experiences, you know. Yeah. Cool, one, cool, of the, cool. one of the things that I thought was really crazy. Um, my mom is, uh, was a nurse for ever. And my dad's super involved in medical devices. And I've talked to a bunch of people in the medical space that as soon as they open someone's chest or they open their heart for like heart surgery, they can tell if that person eats meat or doesn't because of the arteries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So like you pulled up, you know, we were talking earlier, you pulled up uh, Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. He had six heart transplants. (laughs) Holy shit. He had six different hearts. Yeah. That's crazy. He lived till he was 101. <laughs> so and I think, you, and I, you ran through six hearts. I mean, yeah, that's something like the average person can't afford to live. Yeah. Mm. I think I think you're going to I think you're going to find uh, exceptions and I think you're gonna, like my like mm. my grandfather was died at 96 years old of or whatever and he ate bacon yeah. and eggs mm-hmm. every single day of and, yes. and with his friends yep. and so Happens it's like to smokers too. It does. And I think and by the way, I just Listen, I, l- it's genetics. A lot of it comes down to that. And some people, their genes have been like, they're stronger. They can yeah. handle things. And some people yeah. are susceptible to well, certain things. What were you going to say about um, educating kids on where meat comes from? No, I, you were my looking only, at me my, funny. no, I wasn't. My only point on that one was just like, uh, it's, 
sometimes I, I think about like where the line gets drawn with that stuff. Like, uh, do you show kids where the floor came from? It's made of wood. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and is there going to be an outrage over the fact that we're um, cutting um, down no, trees? No, 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 and- no. Because the floor won't affect the future of humankind. If we well, started consuming would, differently. Would, it, I mean, it will if we keep cutting down trees for floors. Do you well, know then, what I'm I mean, for wooden floors, sure, yeah. yeah. But to but your a, point, maybe or, or for walls if it was or for roofs for wooden you know walls and wooden roofs, yeah, sure. But but don't say yeah, sure. Like that's a massive problem. The cutting down of our trees for for deforestation, paper, massive problem, yeah. massive yes, problem. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Right. And so it's like it's like where do you where do you draw the line? Do you show them that? Yes, do you, you show, do. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. You absolutely you do. You show them deforestation, and then, just, yes. and then they just make decisions for themselves, which I which I agree with. Which I, I think it, which which is really cool about like I don't want to give it away, um, but what we're all about to talk about this week about like different stuff that we can do to contribute to the planet and what we can do with our our voices now. You know, you compare that to when we were kids. There was just a few channels that you're watching. There was no internet. Like that wasn't a thing. And as soon as that kind of came to be, now all these other people have voices. Now all these people can talk about stuff. So Mm. that's why I really support what you're doing because yeah, it's uncomfortable as hell. And yeah, it gets a lot of flack. But at the same time, we're using this platform that we have to communicate. So the the access to knowledge is so vast now. And I want to be a part of of spreading that, which is what you right. said. We got a big meeting coming up this week, guys. And, We're going to do some good things for this planet. God yeah. damn it. Fuck and on that guys. note, too, I think one thing that, um, you know, in terms of being plant-based, um, when I look at people, it goes beyond all the ethics and all this stuff. I, I think another point is, too, like, we live in a very scarcity mindset nowadays, like, where you, you see, like— Trump as our president, he's promoting jobs. Like jobs is always the thing. So in order to have more jobs, we got to have coal. You know, we got to destroy the environment more. And I think like when you think about veganism or plant-based, there it opens up so many opportunities because now you look at a McDonald's, like if you want to start a fast food company in Michigan or Ohio, where we're from, you, you're going to get run out because there's 50 other ones. But say you find a location, a bigger city that's maybe a little more open and you open something that's plant-based, there's a huge opportunity there Shout because there's Veggie a Grill. shift happening. Exactly. <laughs> Veggie Grill just Shout set up Veggie Grill. We, we, set up we two get in Chicago. Veggie Grill sometimes, and this is how I know that we're closing in on good turf here. Sometimes we just get veggie grill because we legit want veggie what grill. What do you mean? Yeah, I like always want veggie grill. Like, it's grill. not even because yeah. we have to eat. Shout like, out veggie grill. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I want a buffalo bomber. I want the buffalo chilling wings or whatever yeah. they're called. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because it's really good shit. And yeah, I, yeah. I, like. Good to hear, man. I think we're yeah. moving in that direction, I guess. Yo, yo. <laughs> Speaking of veggie grill, I, I, I want to bring this up before uh, before we late. go to a, yeah, yeah, an audio only. Um, oh, I thought you were saying go to veggie grill. Go to veggie grill. I do. I could do that too. too. You've seen this, bro. Big vegan YouTubers leaving leaving veganism mm. after he broke down and ate raw eggs after a thirty five day water fast. Yeah, you saw this. Of course, I saw it. Can I can I read one of the things? <laughs> you have to. Here? Not that one, please. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna read, bro. Oh shit! All right, all right, all right. So he decided to try animal products. He ate local raw eggs and wild caught salmon. He called the move a huge identity crisis, but he admitted he felt better. He even said another quote here: After eating salmon, he ejaculated for the first time in months. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was this guy eating before? <laughs> Holy go, shit. Go well, he did up, a 35 day up, water dude, fast. There's a part like, where he says he couldn't do any push. I couldn't do push ups right. without getting injured. What? This guy. This guy. What? I know him, yeah. yeah. This is he, that dude. Thank God we didn't oh, hang out with them. Oh, he came to the fight? Really? Is, is he British? Uh, yeah. He is. Yeah. Is he a nut? Well, well, pretty nutty. Oh, he ejaculated he jizz in 35 <laughs> days. Like, dog, what were you doing? That's not about being vegan. I, I know Tim, and um, Tim. You know, I really <laughs> like this guy, man. You know, I, when I knew him, I thought he was a very cool guy. He's done a lot for veganism. He won Ninja Warrior on a plant based diet. He oh, was he did. A, he was a very. He's, oh. he's one of the world's best free runners. Oh shit! Yeah, on, all on a plant based diet. Um, I think he. You know, my own personal opinion of this guy is he's striving for a level of perfection that doesn't exist. And he's uh, always trying new things. He did a 35-day water fast. He drank his own piss for two years. Oh, he's one of the piss drinkers. Piss we, drinkers. We've talked about this. And uh, does I that can't. disqualify you if, you, if you're um, a piss drinker? I think anything Slightly? you say is… Uh, it's extreme. Yeah, it's, ex- it's I mean, extreme. It should be questioned. It should like be. If I was you, just sipping my glass of piss right now. So weird. I shouldn't be, be on the yeah. podcast. Um, <laughs> it's not that. It's just like… Nah, yeah, you're right. Get the fuck off. <laughs> yeah. So I think, look, man, he's he's one of I don't know what it is with him. I think who knows where his <laughs> mental health is at, or whatever, or what these extreme diets have done for him. Um, and you know, he felt better after eating after eating 
um, whatever he ate, eggs or salmon or some if, shit. If I go vegan again and I can't finish, dude, I'm going to be really mad at you, bro. Hey, I got a good statistic for you, man. Oh, shit. Now, you should try to get it up because I don't want right. to get the numbers wrong. Right. But look up vegan versus omni erectile dysfunction. Omni erectile dysfunction. Versus vegan. I'm going to make vegan. that my That's, kid's I, middle name. I, 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 think Yo, it's, I think it's two words. Better. Like better. Omnivore. Honestly, let's talk about this. Like vegan boners. Vegan, let's talk about it. <laughs> they're better, dude. <laughs> what do you mean they're better? They're better. Plant they're based, plant-based boners, boners, boners those, man. It's, it's a real thing, you're dude. Lying. Like you're you lying. can you can laugh. You can think I'm joking. It's a real thing. Also, when you're eating that good food and not that rotting flesh, things Wait, taste on, a little hold different. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're not about to tell me your vegan bone is better than mine. <laughs> I know I'm, you're not gonna tell me. That. <laughs> I'm. Hey, I might not go there, but it's what's, vegan boners what's are so, good, bro. What's so dope about it, guy. <sighs> like. I never struggled with ED. Bro, you're fucking 12. Right, exactly. 12 years old. I mean, hold exactly. on a second. Let's go. No, 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 no. But, let's cut back to the root. But, Boners are all about blood flow. So let's go. Exactly. To, let's that's go. what it is. Oh, exactly. That's exactly. what it is. That's now what I was going to get at. My that's what I was going to get at. <laughs> Finally, I knew I'd find something. I get it. Too. Like the ability <laughs> to just go full send. It, it just happens, bro. It happens more Spencer's frequently. A it's easier. Flag pole over here, bro. Dude, <laughs> just, just a flag around pole, with dog. A boner all day. Are you, no. Oh my god, that no, makes that's so not much true. sense. That's not true. He's got a, got a got a corn husk as a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know the statistics, man. But no, I just, no, it's I right just here, know. bro. Oh, you got it. Uh, vegetables are the best way to prov- not only prevent ED but the heart disease. Yeah, yeah. This, so, I mean, there's a lot of stats in this paragraph uh, here. But cool. Well, it's a lot can, of numbers. People can look that shit up, but basically, you. Stay hard longer, more years if you're eating oh. a plant-based diet. Damn. I oh, know. But don't worry, you're going back there anyway. It's all good. So, That's like, tight. it's hey, it's lit if you want to live to 150 LP, but do you want to get boners at 150? <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, yeah. That's, cool. That's what I'm saying, dog. <laughs> boners That's what? what? People, I mean, people, like, the the mentality of, like, dudes saying, like, you're weak if you're vegan, it's like, bro, let's talk when we're 80. Let's, let's see if you can boners. get a boner. Let's, let's talk, talk boners. Well, I mean, technically, anybody can get a boner at 80 nowadays. They just got to pop a pill. Okay, and, you know, 120. Let's yeah. talk boners. No, I, literally any age. You just take a pill and you got a fucking <laughs> boner. That's nothing nowadays. That's true. Uh, like a real boner, no pill. Qu- question for you. Because Australia, right? Yeah. Obviously. Uh, speaking of boners, have you ever been scared that you might fall off the side of the flat earth. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was wondering, you I was wondering are, if you guys would bring this it's up. It's just end of the podcast. I got to ask because you're right fucking there. Yeah, right am now. I? Yeah. I, I've never worried about it before. I've never swam out that far. Mm. How far a swim is it? Well, something to think about. Yeah, something to think about. I'll keep it in mind. We'll yeah. talk about it more later. Hey, listen, I want to do. A, I want to go to an audio only Q&A. All right. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about PETA. Yeah, and Steve Irwin. Mm. Uh huh. We can't do this on video. It's gonna be a juicy okay. conversation. Okay. We're Let's gonna do go. it in the audio only Q and A. Um, yo, James, thank you for joining us, bro, for reals and educating about us, uh, us about your vegan vegan life. My pleasure, man. Thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate being able to talk about this. Thank you. Of course, dude. Where can they find you on social? Uh, at James Aspie on Instagram, James Aspie on Facebook, James and Carly on YouTube. Fucking incredible. And how do you say that without using words? <laughs> <laughs> like. That's when I get my pen and paper out, man. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> um, okay, yo, we love you guys. Hit that subscribe button. We're going to audio only, iTunes, Spotify. Right now, we're going to get juicy. I love you guys. Leave your feedback below. Take it easy. Peace. And during this time as well, when I had cancer and I was on this chemotherapy and shit, they told me I was, you know, maybe I was going to die. Very good chance I was going to die and that I wasn't allowed to drink or anything like this. So I just started taking heaps of pills, heaps of eckies. Heaps of speed and fair bit of coke, smoking weed all day, every day, and just fucking going hard, man, because I thought I was going to die. 